as you said, like uh, Lonely was a constant uh, mm. accompaniment. Mm. I, I think that she was not from the right century. She was not. She was born a century too uh, <laughs> too soon, you know. So, of course, she she could. Um, she had this feeling because uh, she was a, an abandoned child, you know. But also, I think she was so feeling so different than the other women. So that it's all, and also she was so bright, you know. That there was many aspects in her personality and in her childhood which isolated her. And me, in my way of uh, you know trying to interpreting her. I try to keep uh, this um, violence of not accepting the society or who you are, the fact that you are a woman and the fact that you are your destiny destiny is just to have a miserable life. You know, when you are a rebel, you suffer. You know, you fight, you determined, but you suffer because you don't know if you're going to succeed. And it's so much easier to be as the other, you know. It's so much easier to accept uh, the rules. If you don't want to accept them, that's when you start to suffer. And this violence, that's isolated her. And, and, and this is what I, I tried uh, to keep, you know, every day of the shooting, even if I was not expressing it in a scene, you know, I, I, I really thought that uh, this mix of um, strength and vulnerability, you know, was uh, important. I admire myself very much autodidact people because, you know, even today it's so difficult to um, d'être né to be, to be born. born in somewhere so poor without nothing and to be able to discover your vocation, your destiny and to, you know, to be able to have the strength to pour, uh, briser les barrières sociales. To, to break social barriers. Mm. And uh, that, uh, for me, it was something uh, very intelligent but also very, yes, with power, you know. And the mixer of tragedy and success, I like in uh, Chanel's life, because nothing, uh, it's a way, c'est une façon de transcender la tragédie. It's a way to transcend tragedy. What she has done with her body, with the, the clothes, with the way she succeeds after, you know. You know, it was a kind of flukish thing, just like almost all the parts that I've done. Like, there's never been any rhyme or reason to it. Uh, I've never gotten any of the roles that I've actively pursued, and I've only gotten these strange things that have come out of nowhere and just uh, landed in my lap. And, and it's taken me in, like, uh, you know, all these strange different directions, which, uh, you know, I'm really sort of grateful for in the, at the end of the day. But... Um, she must have seen me in an English movie, and I can't remember which one. And she just called my agents up and said, does he speak French? And they said yes, of course, and, which I sort of barely did. <laughs> and, uh, and then we had a phone conversation where I had sort of prepared very specific, a couple of uh, little statements for myself <laughs> that I could stumble through. And the next thing I know, knew, I was uh, in Paris. Her designs changed the world of fashion, and the empire she built still bears her name. But before she was Chanel, she was Coco. J'ai perdu mon pauvre Coco, Coco mon chien que j'adore. Coco, Coco. Coco. Trocadéro, il est loin, s'il court encore. Si, j'aime bien. Sinon, par ça, il peut. Il est moins abruti que les autres. Et lui, il a des relations. C'est l'heure où les amis se disent au revoir. Bonne chance, Coco. Qu'est-ce que tu viens faire ici Deux jours. 
te remettre dans le train quand elle en était encore temps. Madame veut des robes sans corset, des chapeaux sans plumes. Vas-y, coucou. Ça tombe bête, c'est juste l'empreinte de jour. Qu'est-ce que je vais faire sans toi T'es jaloux Affreusement, ouais. Toutes les femmes te regardent. Toutes les femmes te regardent, toi.